Sure. sure. Um, so, so thank, thank you for, for attending uh, this talk. Uh, my name is uh, Blaise Stein. Um, I'm an associate professor at uh, UCLA. Um, I just graduated from, uh, from, uh, from Georgia Tech. Tech. So, so this is a, 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 um, a work that had a collaboration with a lot of students at Georgia Tech. Tech. Um, so, so it's, uh, it's about the implementation of an open source uh, GPT GPU framework. Um, based, based on, on, on RISC-5. Uh, for the agenda, agenda for this talk, I will be uh, kind of presenting the case that we made for uh, supporting RISC-5 as an ISA extension, uh, Vortex as an ISA extension for RISC-5. Then I'll be talking about the, our GPU macro architecture um, and, and uh, some of the um, changes that, that we, we add to the macro architecture to, uh, to improve performance and, and and, and also, also accelerate texture texture sampling. Um, and then I talked about, about the, the latest work that we did is expanding this micro architecture to support the, the graphics pipeline. To start with, I want to talk about the, the ice extension for the for the for the vortex um, GGGGU. Um, our, our motivation for doing this work was to um, to consider the cost of of uh, uh, supporting the, uh, the cost of, of uh, supporting a custom ISA. Um, and an ISA change affects the compiler, the, the simulator, the debugger, and also some of the low-level software stack. stack. So, so it was important for us to explore um, a, a minimum ISA subset to support the GGGPU expansion. And the we uh, the, uh, the approach, approach that uh, we went, went on to um, identify the minimum IC addition to RISC five was we survey various GPU architecture among them the AMD GPUs, the GPUs, uh, NVIDIA GPUs, GPUs, and also some of the ARM GPUs, and consolidated a critical subset, like the, the minimum subset of features, features that we wanted, wanted to support on top of RISC five. And, and we also, also kind of evaluated the extension capability that the RISC-5 offers um, so that we can explore, so that we can implement this, 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 uh, this new ISA. The, the first thing that we'll be looking to do is supporting the thread model, model for GGGU, meaning we add the support for the activation of waveforms and thread, which, which are unique characteristics of the GGGU microarchitecture. And then, and then we, we added, added a, we expanded the memory model, model to add shared memory, memory so that, that um, so that we can have uh, application that, that can, can share, this, that can access the standard allocation. We, we also added a register file. file. Uh, it, uh, we also expanded the register file, file so that, that we can have per work per waveform and also per thread registers. registers. Which is something that, that was needed, needed so that we can, can we, we, so, so that we, can, we, we are able to actually execute much of uh, we can, can execute um, um, pro -pro, um, um, the application in part using much of the registers. The control flow um, support for for GPU is also unique uh, due to the fact that we have to handle the divergence. Uh, this is this is this happens when you have um, um, multiple thread executing in range, range and then they are diverging from, from, from that, that point. point. Uh, so, uh, so we added two instructions, instruction. um, it's split instruction, instruction and then join instruction. instruction. And then and we, we also have to support synchronization. Uh, when we have multiple waveform from running in parallel on, on, on the system, system, we want to be able to synchronize the execution at some point when if you want to maybe access the memory and, 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 and see the changes. changes. And then, and then the last extension with this ISA was the support for uh, the acceleration of texture sampling. sampling. Um, this is also one of the features that is supported by parallel applications like OpenCL and, and CUDA. For, for the, the microarchitecture, we started with the standard five-stage five pipeline. And then this is an in-order issue and out-of-order of the and we basically expanded the pipeline to add a waveform scheduler. Um, this is a module that allows us to schedule new waveform into the pipeline. Um, we also added an instruction buffer that allows us to um, 
to, to fetch, fetch uh, instruction, instruction for individual wave wave front front and then schedule them, them into, into the into the issue stage. stage. Um, we, we also have the, the shared memory, memory and the texture, texture unit, which is located here, which is, which is, which is also part of the execution stage standardization. Another extension to the of the the the, 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 the is the, the ex ex in the, the clustering, clustering of multiple, multiple cores, cores. Um, one, one of, of the unique properties, properties of, of GPU, GPU is the fact that, that we want to be able to scale as many cores as possible. possible. Um, um, the addition of the clustering uh, um, structure allows us to basically group multiple cores into, into, a, into a single unit where, where they can share an LP cache or LP cache. Yes. yes. Are we all good? Okay. Okay. Yes. yes. So <clears throat> to kind, kind of uh, give you a quick overview of how, how an, an instruction actually traverses this pipeline. Um, when, when the wavefront wave schedule is still an instruction, we have a TC, a wavefront wave ID, and a thread mask. mask. And this basically is sent to the to the stage, stage where um, where, where the ICAST actually, actually gets the instruction and then it moves into the decode stage, stage where we now have the instruction that has been decoded. Um, once the instruction is decoded, it is sent into the I buffer, and this is where we have the access to the scoreboard. And then after that, the instruction is issued to the execution unit. At this moment, now we have the register that has been fetched um, during the, the issue stage. And, and the execution unit can now take the instruction, execute the program, and, and then the result is written back into the into the register file. I mentioned earlier that, that uh, one of the additions to this map architecture is the expansion of the 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 cache. So we in Vortex we have a a high binary cache. cache. This is a multi bind multi ported non-locking non cache. cache. Um, it supports multiple configurable banks that allows us to execute um, memory requests from multiple threads in, in, in parallel. <coughs> One of the challenges in implementing this happening was the handling of bank conflict. Uh, this happens when multiple requests are directed into the same bank, and then at that moment we are forced to solve, to solve the pipeline. <coughs> Typically, on a, on a typical mainstream um, uh, GPUs, um, bank of is kind of managed using the memory policy of addresses, and this takes place inside the LSU. Um, 
um, but the, the design, design of all this prevented us from making the change at that location. So we had to support um, the bank on feeling handling inside the cache. And the, and the approach, approach that we did is uh, we implemented a feature called uh, virtual metric modeling. Uh, the idea here is basically, is basically exploit the cash locality, the cash line locality. Um, since um, since the, the cash block inside uh, the data cache is generally larger than the actual database, um, we can add additional calls to fetch additional data from the same cash line in the during the same cycle. Therefore, reducing the, the possibility of having a bank, a bank conflict. The other addition is the, the texture unit. This is the component of the microarchitecture that actually access memory to load texture data. Um, as part of the texture sampling, we also do some sampling. So we fetch text cell from memory, we sample them, and then generate an, an output, an output image. The, the process, the microarchitecture of this unit, unit um, um, is basically configurable using the risc CSR. Um, this, this is where we set the dimension and the format of a particular, particular texture image, and then also the adequacy mode and, and the desired filter mode. And, and the, the pipeline, pipeline is basically structured into really three main components. Um, the first stage is how we do the address generation. Um, this is where we calculate all of the addresses that we need to send to the memory system. And once the addresses are sent to the memory system, the memory schedule actually schedules the addresses into the, the low-level memory system, either the D-cache or the specialized texture cache. Once the, once the text cell from memory are returned, we have the last stage of the pipeline where we actually apply the texture sampling. Uh, this is generally by linear or or trillion filtering. For, For the validation of this microarchitecture, we use the, the Intel Pack Area 10 FPTA. Uh, this is a relatively large FPTA, um, and on this FPTA, we were able to synthesize the two cores of the GPU. Um, this is a total of 512 GPU threads. Um, a single core we typically have 16 threads in total. Um, and then and this, this is uh, this is also uh, with the forty-eight kilobyte of uh, of, of a low. Um, we, we use the a subset of original benchmark, benchmark, an open benchmark, benchmark um, to kind of, of um, evaluate the performance of the microarchitecture. On this slide. slide Performance is scaling as to increase the, the number of cores. Um, some so of the benchmarks are actually memory bound, so you can see that the scaling is slightly, uh, it's slightly it's, it's quite, quite different. different. Um, and, and the last, uh, the, the last two uh, benchmarks, are the benchmark that we use for evaluating the texture, the texture unit, um, implementing uh, bilinear sampling and uh, and point sampling. One of the area of of, uh, of, of the GPU, GPU of the GPU, GPU market, market that is actually the the, the largest, largest is the is the, the graphics, graphics rendering, rendering. Um, and, and this, this applies uh, this is applicable to both 3D gaming, uh, card modeling. Um, if you have uh, your a Windows desktop or Mac desktop, um, this the composition of the UI is also running on the GPU. GPU. And then when we got talking about the new <laughs> New device, device like, like AR, VR. So, so that's also the places where GPU rendering, rendering is, is becoming important. Um, but we, we have observed, observed that they very really focus on academia when it comes to graphics rendering. That was one of the motivations for, for this work. And another, another motivation, motivation was, was to look, look at the, to specifically explore uh, uh, the design space of software versus hardware specialization. Um, and the, the fact, fact that, that um, the, the traditional graphing pipeline is slowly fading in a way and can be replaced with ray tracing and DSSL, it was important for us to explore a hybrid microarchitecture that doesn't, um, that doesn't, uh, that is not too expensive and will allow us to use the remaining area for, the, for either adding additional cores or implementing new, new, uh, uh, new microarchitecture for graphics. The, the traditional, traditional pipeline, pipeline 
um, of, of the, the, the data color for the graphics um, is basically broken in, in three stages. stages. Uh, the, the, the geometry stage, stage where you take the, the, the 3D vertices, vertices and then, then construct a primitive. Um, once, once you have, you have a 3D primitive, uh, let's assume a triangle. During the rasterization stage, stage, we actually color the, 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 the different pixels that, that the triangle overlap. overlap. And then and the, the final stage, stage is the, the composition where we actually render the, the, the final triangle in the destination image. image. Um, typically, typically, we have, we have a better shader, which is a programmer shader that are on this stage, and a pixel shader, which is a programmer shader that are on, on the final stage. stage. And, and on, on the, the, on the left, left side, side um, we see all, all of the different fixed functions function you need that are part of the traditional graphics pipeline. This is actual power block. block. They, they are not programmable. And what, what we propose is a hybrid architecture, architecture where, where we reduce the, the, the number of uh, fixed function units and, and move some, some of the stages into the shared pipeline, the programmable pipeline. In a yellow, yellow color here, here these are the stages that we move out of the fixed function pipeline into the programmable stage. stage. Um, making, this, this, making this decision actually reduces the area that is required for support in the graphics pipeline. And, and the fixed function that we have in as fixed function, function, the component that we have are the ones that, that are truly performing in 3D juggle. And, and here, here you can, can see how the original pipeline is migrated into a pipeline where we have a lot more components that are yellow, basically, that are part of the programmable the programmable shader. One, One part of the, the contribution for this work, work is the implementation of the high true rasterizer. Um, this, this is the unit that, that actually takes a, a, a primitive and then generates the different pixels that are covered by, by the primitive. Um, and we have this is a this is a a, 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 a microarchitecture that, that is highly parallel with multiple slides of raster that, that can be instantiated. And we have a Kind of, of a, the last stage, stage of the of the rasterizer implement a recursive style descent, descent where we can actually control the last style of rasterizer if you want to to kind of increase the performance even further, further, kind of allowing us to to kind of, of um, play this uh, maybe a trade off between increasing performance or or increasing the area. The the other. Um, this is, this is the, the, the actual kind of, of high level micro architecture of this rasterizer, um, where, where uh, we allocate the memory where we store a high buffer and a primitive associated with the primitive buffer. And, and we have a raster cache, cache that is basically from which we fetch uh, primitive, and the raster slices actually implement the high level. Um, and, and this is the recursive descent, descent that traverses each individual part inside the tile and then and generate a, a series of, of parts in which you put that at, 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 at the end and send it to the, to the, the shader pipeline line for, for rendering. rendering. The, the other, other component that was also implemented as part of the fixed function pipeline is the render output unit. Um, this is a component that sits in the final stage of the graphics pipeline. Once, Once you have, have the color already calculated, uh, we need to um, we need to either we need to blend the the, the final color with the destination, the destination image, and also apply some uh, depth and intensity tests before writing the final color into the into the into memory. Um, the new, new microarchitecture micro the graphics pipeline um, implemented um, um, required that we revisit the, the, the design, uh, the scaling of the GPU. Uh, and, and one of the, the, the changes that we made is moving some, some of the components that were inside, inside the core and then have them shared inside, inside the cluster. cluster. For instance, we have the iCache, the Dcache. Uh, the, the functional unit, unit um, that are now part of the clusters. Um, this is still configurable, so the, um, the, the designer is able to decide whether they want to do a one to one mapping between the caches and the core as well, well even when we didn't use this, this, uh, this new layout. Um, we can see here that we have our rasterizer unit, um, the arrow with the render output unit, and the texture unit that are now shared as part of the cluster. 
and we have all of the cores uh, inside the cluster that are grouped as, 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 as a socket of four core four, 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 four sockets. I see um, the, the vortex IC extension, extension also needed to, uh, to get, get some addition so that we can support the, um, the, the, the graphic software. software. Um, the the rasterizer, rasterizer uh, for the rasterizer, rasterizer we added, we added a new uh, instruction uh, called the Rast, which, which, which is in the software. This is basically how it's, it's a typical um, program of a shader. Where the, the instruction, instruction here is, is called to fetch, fetch um, to fetch the, the next uh, pixels from the rasterizer. And, and once we get the pixels of the rasterizer, now we execute the, the, the rest of the, of the program using the those pixels at once. Um, the the ROP unit uh, is, is basically uh, uh, driven by, by this new instruction, instruction that takes the whole law and then the death law, the death value of the pixel. And then once we make that call, uh, uh, this, this is where the ROP is being called, being called. Um, and, and, and it basically triggers the the the, 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 the ROP and write the final call into, into the into the destination. The destination. One, One other optimization that we add um, to the, the, the microarchitecture is the depolarization. Uh, we have the JQuery new instruction that allows us to quickly depolate the pixels across, across the, the, the primitives. primitives. To evaluate this work, we use a kind of a subset of the, the power of the benchmark. Uh, we run the, 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 the benchmark, benchmark on a static spend energy. It's slightly larger FPGA than the 114. We're still able to get a, a um, to instantiate a uh, GPU course on, on this FPGA. Um, with, with a configuration of a single raster, four hour render output unit, and eight texture memory units. We were able to reach a pixel period of 3.7 gigahertz per second, with a temperature period of 7.4 gigahertz per second. Um, one, one of the um, challenges of of, of, uh, of doing graphics uh, research using simulation is the fact that uh, um, being able to execute a standard benchmark is very is very very slow. Um, so, so one, one of the motivations of actually being able to implement, to implement a, a, a GPU in hardware way allows us to actually simulate a large benchmark and still be able to achieve a frame, a, a frame rate that, that fits within the, the kind of the bound that is accessible at 60 frames per second. And this is the, the scaling. Uh, this is actually the result uh, that we gathered by actually running those, those benchmarks on, on the FPGA. Where we, we can actually see, see as we increase the number of cores, we actually see a considerable uh, uh, scaling of, of performance. This is the kind of the rendering time in, in milliseconds. The other thing, thing that we wanted, wanted to explore with this work, work uh, when, when I mentioned earlier, the, 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 the exploratory space of hardware, hardware versus, versus software. software. Acceleration. Um, we made we the observation, observation that, that the interpolation uh, extension that we added actually gave us a very good sense of speed up. Um, and this, this is, is a speed up from, from, from a baseline uh, graphics pipeline that is fully implemented in software. Um, so, so when we implement the resistance stage in, 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 uh, in hardware, we self implementing in software. This is the, we get like, like a 1.9% speed up. up. And, and the random output, output is actually 1.9% uh, speed, speed up. up. So in so some ways, the random output will turn out to be the component that, that truly gives us the biggest performance gain by implementing it in, in as, a, as, a, as a hardware, uh, uh, as a fixed function hardware. hardware. <laughs> So, so I would like, like to, to, to end, end and uh, end, end here and, uh, and say uh, thank, thank you for, for listening. If you, you have, have uh, any, any question. question. Oh. Okay, okay.
Hey, and thank you for your presentation. Yeah, and uh, can you go back to the pipeline stage of, uh, I think it's at the page three or page four. Pipeline stage. stage. Yeah, the pipeline, five pipeline stage page. The, the which slide, slide was that? that? Uh, I think it's page four, I think. Oh, yes. I see. Yeah, it's around this stage. Uh, yeah, this page. Yeah, I'm pretty interested in this part because uh, in a GPU, uh, when you have a texture unit uh, instruction, you have to uh, uh, wait for the instruction to complete, and the latency mm. is usually quite long. The, the latency of this kind of instruction is quite long, and you have to queue a lot of uh, texture unit instruction uh, before uh, to to achieve high efficiency. So I I'm not I'm interested in that uh, whether this would uh, change your design or you have to modify a lot of design in the uh, standard uh, risk five GPU uh, risk five CPU based architecture. So do you need to change the scheduling mechanism of this uh, of this kind of instruction? Yeah, did I explain my question clearly? Uh, the, the, the question was about how we how we schedule instruction, instruction into the pipeline. Yeah, with quite high latency, like texture instruction. Yeah, because you usually. Hey. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, you usually have to wait for quite a long time for the texture unit instruction to be completed, right? Yeah. yeah so you have to queue a lot of uh, you have to queue a lot of texture unit instruction and waiting for them to be completed from the uh, external memory. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. in, in, in this, this microarchitecture, micro we have uh, multiple waveforms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, these, these are independent, independent um, execution, execution structure. structure. Uh, they, they all have, have the the unique yeah. so, so, the way, way we, we kind of, of uh, kind of, of reduce a little bit the latency um, of of, uh, of the execution is we we actually fetch. fetch um, so, so when we fetch the first, first, first the first from the first waveform, it goes through the pipeline, and then eventually it gets scheduled into one execution, execution unit. But once, once the waveform is scheduled, the, the, ne the, the next cycle, cycle will be scheduled the next one. one. Um, and, and then, then on the next cycle, we schedule the next one. So we can have actually, with this architecture, we can. it is possible to have uh, let's, let's say, say if, if you have, have a, an architecture of with eight, eight waveforms, waveforms, it is possible, possible to have um, eight, eight instructions actually within, within the pipeline, pipeline. Eight, eight or more actually, actually because, because it depends, depends also on the digitization of the execution units. So this is one of the ways way where we, we cannot hide the latency of, of, uh, of the programming execution by, by um, but basically, basically leveraging the, the fact that they have a virtual wave from. You can think about what a wave from more like a, a hardware hard thread. thread. Yeah. So at most eight, uh, instruction can be queued at the texture unit stage, right? I, I think something like this. Yes, yes. so we so can have, have multiple instructions queued inside, inside the, 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 the instruction, instruction buffer. buffer. Um, um, just repeat the instruction. instruction uh, this could be uh, potentially maybe, maybe uh, you can have, have n number of instructions per waveform. One day, the CPU will be all waiting, waiting for the scoreboard to have, have the operands available. But if everything, if, if, if there are dependencies, it's not a problem. Uh, you, 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 you should be able, able to have uh, instructions in the pipeline every cycle. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Is there any questions? Okay, I have a question there. Uh, I have a question about <coughs> split and join instruction. And 
I'm curious about the the predict value. How did you de determine the predict is branch or not branch? Yes. Yeah, so, so this, this is, is a, this is actually a quite an interesting, interesting question. question. Um, um, so, so we uh, really, really implemented, implemented a, so, so split times one is a is, a, is one, one of the, the unique uh, instructions that are part of this IIC that you have to explicitly handle the inside the compiler. Inside the compiler. Um, so, so we have, we have a, a special, special compiler, compiler pass in LMVM that, that does, does an analysis, analysis over the control, control flow graph to identify if a particular, particular branch is divergent or not. Um, and, and then, then once we gather the list of all of the divergent branches, we basically annotate them. them. We, we, we calculate the, the, the post dominator of the, of the control, control flow and insert a joint in the post dominator. And then, and then right, right before the branch, branch we insert a split. So, so this split is basically the condition, condition that, that is also that was part of the original branch instruction. Um, once we instrument all, all of the control flow with split and joint, then, then um, the, when, when the program actually, actually executes at runtime, time, this, this instruction actually uses a hardware stack. stack. Um, um, it's, it's, it's basically it's a, a stack diversion. Uh, and, and basically, basically use that stack to manage the, 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 the nesting, nesting of control flows when the program is executing at runtime. Uh, okay, so the predict k value is determined by compiler, right? Uh, but sometimes compiler can uh, calculate the pre the branch or not, right? So how did you? Decide that value. Can you, you say, say sometimes the compiler can, can cannot, cannot, cannot determine if it is divergent? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I see. see. Yes, yeah, so, so it, this, this is a very, very, very good question. question. So, so a very, very good example, example would be if, 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 if you are, if you are running the analysis of a function, function on a function, function right? right? So, so the function is going to have arguments, arguments like the ABC. You cannot, you cannot easily determine whether that function is going to be divergent or not. not. Specifically, if that function is not a static function. function. Uh, so, so what we do in the compiler, uh, we basically assume, um, um, if you cannot, cannot determine whether it's divergent or not, we assume that it will be divergent. That's the same thing for memory access. We assume that divergent. We ask that it will be a much more secure way of ensuring that they don't miss Miss out, miss out on, 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 on not using the divergent control flow. Oh, okay, so when you find that it's a wrong branch and you will take the, the other branch in the state and take that thread out to SQ, is that correct? Um, I, 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 I do not follow, follow correctly. Uh, what was, what the, was question? the question? Uh, if you found, found that the branch is wrong. How did you resolve this? Uh, if, if I found, found that, that, that the, the branch is, is that divergent, uh, or, or, or that you, you, uh, you you assume that it's divergent, right? Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. So there are a right branch and a wrong branch. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe you can ask a question after that. Oh, okay, okay, I, I can you make this clear. Blice, can you still use, do you still have access on your Jar Tech email? Yes, yes, I do. Okay, okay. okay. Maybe, maybe I, will, I will pass the contact for, for, for this. You Thank you. mentioned something about um, a, a, a wrong range, range or a white right range. range. I will make sure. sure. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can then repeat that offline. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.